This child murder and cold bloodedly murdered your son. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. There was this club in Little Italy where we used to hang out. Of course, I can't say the name, but I can tell you we were playing Pikachu that day. Me, John, and a couple of other guys, we were playing Pikachu. John loves playing Pikachu. We were smoking, we were drinking, but John was strongly against smoking. Every time I lit up a cigarette, John told me not to smoke. Don't smoke, Angelo, that's gonna kill you, you're gonna get lung cancer. I said, who are you, a doctor? You're a gangster, dude, you're a gangster, and we laughed. We were teasing each other, we were like, we were like brothers, me and John, we grew up together. A phone rang. The club owner said, it's for Mr. Gotti. And John said, could you bring that to me? He said, no, sir, we don't have enough wire for that. And we all, we all started laughing. John stood up, he stepped up to the table, he picked up the phone, and I could see his smile freeze. He was not happy anymore. He was not laughing. Everything just froze for John Gotti. And I remember I couldn't hear anybody else. I was looking at John, as John said, all right, I'm coming. So he hung up the phone. He came to the table, he picked up his jacket, tapped on my shoulder, man, come with me. So we went out, I said, John, what's wrong? Get in the car. John, what's wrong? Get in the car, I can't drive. John, what is wrong? Just get in the fucking car and drive to the Howard Beach. All right, all right, whatever you say. I got in the car, started the engine, and I just pushed the accelerator to the Howard Beach. We arrived. There were a couple of police cars, an ambulance, and a crushed mini bike. John couldn't even stand on his feet. Victoria was sobbing. John stepped out of the car. He was scared. He stepped up to the ambulance. The ambulance was ready to leave. I saw an officer stop him and said, I'm his father. It was a tragic story. Victoria, Victoria never recovered from that. There were no sign of brakes. So as they said, John's son, little Frankie, was playing with his friends and he was on a mini bike as this guy John Favera, the backyard neighbor of John, hit him with his car. They said he was drunk driving. He didn't push the brake. He didn't even stop the car. He drove the car 200 meters after hitting John's son. They said they had to scream to stop him. This guy knew nothing about respect. He never came to apologize. He never apologized to me. He never apologized to Victoria. In fact, he never washed the blood off his car. And Victoria couldn't take him. This son of a bitch was partying with his friends. A couple of hours after the funeral. Guess what Victoria told me, because I was out. I drove Victoria home and I went to take care of, you know, the funeral expenses and everything. One of the neighbors gave me a call. Mr. Gotti, your wife's making a scene here. She's trying to kill him. Kill who? John Favera. She's trying to kill John Favera. I sit in my car, I raced home. Victoria was at the backyard of John Favera with a band. She was swinging at him, trying to hit him, but she was so emotionally injured, she couldn't land the shot. I tried to calm her down. I hugged her from behind. Victoria, it's all right. It's not all right. It's not all right. This child murderer has to die. I took the bat away from her, hugged Victoria, dragged her to our house, tried to calm her down. That night she cried so much she had no tears left. She fell asleep. And I woke up with the sound of someone open at my door. Mr. Gotti! Mr. Gotti! 
Jesus, what is it? Your wife's trying to kill Favera again. Oh my god. Oh my god. I had pajamas on. I stood up. I fished my pistol. I went to the backyard. Victoria, you gotta stop. You're making a scene here. She was holding a knife in her hand. And she was, she was screaming at Favera, and she was trying to hit him, but of course. Victoria, you're making a scene here. I'm making a scene? I'm making a scene? This child murderer cold-bloodedly murdered your son, and you're just sleeping? What kind of a tough guy are you? Victoria, calm down. This son of a... Bitch murdered the son of John Gotti. And what is John Gotti doing? You're making a scene, Victoria. I'm not making a scene. A hot her so tight. Don't try to shut me up. John pulled up to my house and said, Wanna watch? Watch what? You're asking too many questions. Wanna watch or not? Well, I don't understand what you're saying. You don't have to understand what I'm saying. Want to watch or not? All right. Then go pick your jacket. John drove me to this old garage he owned. Two of the guys that were made members, I'm not allowed to say their names, but they opened the door for John. John said, where is he? They pointed at Favera, tied to a chair, and he had a tape on his mouth. John smiled. Why the tape? Well, he, he was he was screaming, sir. No, he was not. He stepped up to John Favera, took the tape off his mouth, and he was silent as he took over. He said nothing. John started staring into his eyes. How are you doing? Favero started crying. <laughs> Sir, it was an accident. I was, I was, I was, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. John said, no, you're not. I buried my son with my own hands. And what were you doing? Partying with your friends? Drinking beer? John smiled. He looked like a villain. He took off his jacket and said, Angelo, please. He started rolling up his sleeves. John always carried a revolver with him. He took the revolver out, pointed it at John Favera. What would you think, Angelo? Uh, I don't know what to say. All right. He pulled the trigger. There was no bullet in that gun. It was just messing with Favera as hard as he could. Favera started screaming, Sarah, I'm sorry, it was an accident. He pointed the gun at Favera once again. And he... <laughs> Favera's kneecap exploded. And he started screaming at the top of his lungs. It was hard to watch, even for me. John untied his tie. He gave it to me. And said, out! Everybody out! And as we were processing his command, he said, didn't you hear me? Can't you hear what I said? Out! We all went out. John came out, and he had blood all over his shirt. He started unbuttoning his shirt and taking it off. He said, I cannot go out like that. Frankie, come here. There was this guy named Frankie. He was a made member. He said, take off your shirt. He took off his shirt, gave it to John. John whispered something into another guy's ear. Then looked at me and said, we're good to go. 